this is Seca here. Welcome to the Broom Closet. This is Broom Closet Artistry and you have decided to click on the video where I give you a virtual tour of my witchy box. I call it the Circle on the Go box and I am so happy because I finally condensed and simplified a little corner of my witchy life. I went from two and a half shoe boxes of ritual and circle tools and materials to one stunning custom box. Okay, full disclosure, I still use like half of a shoebox for the extra spell chime candles that I have, but this is my main working circle on the go kit. I had seen beautiful boxes on Pinterest before and there's different DIY projects you can do using old jewelry boxes or sewing boxes. I don't have either of those things. I have a jewelry box that is used as a jewelry box and a sewing box that's used as a sewing box. So what I do have is a very, very talented and handsome craftsman who is willing to donate a little of his creative time and uh, help me out with my ideas. Initially, this box was inspired by the Witches of East End box. If anybody has seen that show, the family has a large trunk that they use for all the materials. And I liked how each tool had its own little cubby, its little space. Uh, the show's version is a lot bigger and it's able to hold the family's Book of Shadows, uh, I think beneath the upper compartments, but I didn't need that. I don't have my Book of Shadows completed and I don't always carry it around. So this size was perfect for me. Uh, my version was a little smaller and these were the original drawings. The drawings were across between the Witches of East End and the Jumanji box. As you can see in these drawings, I thought about incorporating some lids into some of the uh, cubbies just so things weren't tossed around in transport. So this is made out of walnut. And of course, when we cruise the lumber yard, I picked one of the more expensive pieces of wood, but as you can see, it's got a really, really stunning color. And my partner who put it all together used maple for these joints, which are called spline joints. And as you'll see later, the little cubbies inside are also made of maple. The final dimensions ended up being nine by seven by four. So let's take a look inside. As you can see, the final outcome is very similar to my projected drawings, but it's not exact. There are no lids and there is no cubby here along the top. But everything fits and I think it came out really beautifully and I love all the variant colors just between the two different types of wood. And as you can see, there are five different sections. One in the lid, three here, and one long one for the candles. Later, I see myself utilizing this lid because there's so much space. I am toying with the idea of creating a false back made out of maple and decorated with some wood burning, some sigils or spell work. So let me show you what I have inside. I have four directional candles, earth, air, water, and fire. One chime candle. I have a small bundle of white sage, medium size bundle of blue sage. I have a book of matches. I have incense. I have this abalone shell, a smaller seashell, rose feather, a small vial of salt, a bell, my pendulum, a bit of quartz, a tiger's eye sphere, a moonstone ring, a triple goddess bracelet. Spell candle holder and a travel size tarot deck. As I mentioned before, you don't need any of these tools to do your magical workings. This has taken me like three years to cultivate, and I'm only now consolidating it into one space. So use what you have. Let me show you how it all fits together. There are two guides in the lid, and this allows me to safely store my incense and this feather I received at my priestess initiation, and this also fits safely inside the lid without getting crushed. In the next section, I knew I needed a dedicated area for my smudging herbs. 
And right now it houses the medium size bundle of blue sage and a smaller bundle of white sage. But there's still plenty of room I could fit more. This was one of the sections I possibly will end up adding a lid to because right now it's staying pretty clean, but I would like to keep the debris that comes off of the herbs from getting into the other areas. This center section is huge. I knew I needed room for my spell candle and it can fit here with the other candles, but right now it fits snugly right in that center area. And also this tarot deck, this was the very first tarot deck that I ever bought ever, and it too fits very easily with wiggle room in the center section. I could take or leave this item. I usually prefer oracle deck, but I wanted to show for size the capacity that the center console has. And another large item I have is the abalone shell. This was also a gift from my initiation for the priestess training that I did, and it fits face down, and when the lid is closed, it doesn't bump against it. And lastly, I keep this bracelet in the center as well, because I like to charge it under the different moons. In this last section, along with the option of smudging or lighting incense, I had a handful of other small items and tools that needed a safe space. These are the little bits that tend to roll around in the bottom of your bag or box that if they don't have a home, they will get lost. The small jar used to contain witch hazel, I believe, but I swapped that out for salt, which I knew I would use more of. And the bell. And my chime candle holder fit together with a little bit of play, but they all fit very nicely there. The rest of my items sit wherever they can fit. The quartz I usually put in next, and that slides in really nicely right beside the salt. The tiger's eye I usually place on top of the spell candle holder. My moonstone ring I put on top of the salt because it's nice and secure. And then the pendulum and smaller seashell fit right along the bottom. And this last section is very self-explanatory. This is where it all began. I just wanted a really nice space to house my directional candles. These were lined up and measured out specifically for this space. As you can see, there's plenty of room between them. And this just allowed space for my matchbook. As I said, my partner made this from scratch. He and I cruised the lumber yard and it all came together from there. I think he did an absolutely beautiful job. We have discussed making these in various layouts uh, available for purchase or custom orders in the future, so keep an eye out at the Broom Closet Artistry Shop. These may become available for you with custom sigil work on them. Thank you everyone for joining me on this virtual tour of my Circle On The Go witchy kit, witchy box. I hope everyone is having a lovely day. Blessed be.